Using the 3D printer slicer doesn't have to be so linear. Let's make it more powerful by using variables and conditional G-code. Slicer software has a lot of different settings, which means to cover every scenario, you can end up with a lot of different printer profiles. But this video is all about being efficient, from streamlining your start G-code to intelligently handling multi-material printing. Let's go. It makes sense to start with the question, what are variables? And the answer is simple. They're values that change throughout a 3D print. Let's examine a 3D print in action and then hit pause. What you're now seeing on the screen is only a small amount of variables that are in play. These are simply some of the variables that you might be familiar with. If we resume our printing and then pause again a few seconds later, we can see that some of the variables have changed, in this example the XY position. In those few seconds, many of those variables remain unchanged, but over the duration of an entire print, we'll find that many more variables change, some of them constantly, some of them back and forth depending on the situation. But which of them do we have access to in the slicer? Well, that depends on the slicer. These pages are linked below in the description. And for Prusa Slicer, we have a web page with the list of placeholders. We also have a table telling us when and when we can't use these placeholders. If you're using Super Slicer like me, in the wiki, we have a dedicated page called Macro and Variable List. And I have to say, this is quite an extensive set of variables that we have to access. Cura also supports this, although the documentation isn't that great. But this third party website, offers a list of all of the variables and this list is extensive once again. You'll notice a lot of these variables are to do with how the model is sliced, but they're not necessarily the most valuable ones for us. Things that are good for us are things like the temperature of the material when the print starts and the temperature of the bed in the same situation. Unfortunately, inconsistency between the slicers makes it hard to come up with examples that cover everything. So I will buy a super slicer a little bit because it's more powerful than the others. And the reason for this is not only the extensive list of variables we have access to, but also the amount of situations where we can paste in custom G-code. In short, there's a lot of scope where we can use our variables. First up, let's look at the situation where when we're printing from Octoprint, we lose any print progress information. Let's come to custom G-code, after layer change, come to a new line and insert some custom G-code using some variables. Let's explain step by step what we've just pasted in. Our line starts with M117, supported by all the major firmwares and used to display a message on the LCD screen. The exact same type of message that you might see, for instance, when your ABL is probing. The words highlighted here are nothing special, they're just plain text for display on the LCD. However, layer underscore num inside the curly brackets is our first variable. For Super Slicer, we won't actually find this variable when we search the documentation. However, if we hover the mouse over, we'll get a tooltip telling us some extra variables that we may use. And in this field, we have layer underscore num and layer underscore z. Layer num will simply tell us the current layer number. Finally, we have the variable total layer count. And as the name suggests, this is the total amount of layers that will make up the completed print. So that's our custom G code using two variables. So how does it actually work in practice? Firstly, when we slice the file, every time the layer changes, our custom G code will be inserted, except the actual values will be substituted instead of the variable names. And here's what that looks like. We can see that as the new layer changes, the message refreshes on the screen. For example, here saying printing layer three of 80. To get rid of the auto scroll, I could shorten my command to layer instead of printing layer. This custom G-code will also work with Prusa Slicer as it supports total layer count as well as layer num on before and after layer changes. Cura, however, is a different story. When we come into our machine settings, we can have custom start and NG code and extrude a start and NG code, but there's no field to insert layer change G code. The answer should be to come to extensions, post-processing and then modify G code, where we can then add a script, insert at layer change. We should be able then to set this to after and set up our M117 G code followed by layer and the variable. Except as you can see here, our test variable is not substituted. Machine name has been taken from the reference. And if I put it into the start G code, 
the name of the printer is substituted in the final g-code as we would expect but if we find the layer change g-code the variable name still remains which means post-processing scripts don't seem to be able to access them we can have a limited workaround and that cura inserts the layer number throughout the print automatically however it's commented so we never see it so if we instead add a post-processing script for search and replace we can search for the first part of this and replace it with m117 layer in the final g code we'll now have an lcd display command for every layer number but we can't access variables to know the total amount of layers if there's something simple i'm missing please comment the solution below and i'll pin it for everyone else to see i said before that super slicer was the most powerful so let's look at why here's a variation on the previous custom line of g code for a layer change m117 is exactly the same before and the words currently highlighted, like our first example, are just plain text. The layer Z variable will tell us the current Z height at any particular time. This will be a measurement most likely in millimeters, but then we have a variable we haven't seen before called bounding box. This one is unique to Super Slicer and it has six sub values. For the current print, the min and max values for X, Y, and Z, again in millimeters. My test object has a height of 16 millimeters, so therefore the max Z would also be 16 millimeters. You'll notice that after the bounding box name, I have the value five in square brackets. So why is that? That's me referencing the address of the sub value that I want to use. Each of them has a numbered address, but the catch is this address starts from zero for the first value of min X. So for me to use the sixth value in the list max Z, I need to say bounding box five. So in this instance, our second variable is telling us the maximum height of the printed object. So by inserting this in the same place as before, on the layer change, it'll now tell us the current height in millimeters of the total height, which means that when we're printing, the LCD will display the information that we were looking for. The most common place to use slicer variables is in the start G-code section. Let's look at some custom start G-code for printing PLA. I first ask the nozzle to warm up to 150 degrees, immediately followed by asking the bed to warm up to 60 degrees. The printer will then home, followed by an ABL probe, and the 150 degree nozzle temperature should mean that there's not molten PLA oozing out of the tip. After probing, I then ask for the final temperature before printing continues. This works great, but what happens if I want to print a different material with different temperatures? To avoid any mishaps, in our start G-code, we can use variables for the first layer bed temperature, as well as the first layer temperature for the hot end. Now it doesn't matter if I'm using PLA or peak, the correct values will be substituted in. Let's switch to my preset for nylon, re-slice the file, and we can see that the bed command is updated to 100 degrees with 270 degrees for the nozzle. And you'll notice that Cura supports these variables in the start G-code as well. It just uses different names, which you can find on the linked reference page. This is the flexibility that we were aiming for. So let's take things a step further by looking at conditional G-code. Let's again start with the definition. What is conditional G-code? In this context, it's G-code that is inserted depending on the condition of a variable. Making decisions depending on a condition is something we do every day. For instance, if it is raining, we might take an umbrella. Applying this thinking with our Thready printer and conditional G-code, we might say, if the material is ABS, heat the printer's chamber. Or if the object is quite short, move the bed down at the end for clearer access. Or in the case of my personal situation, for an IDEX machine, if more than one extruder is being used, heat the relevant ones. Earlier in the year, I reviewed the Sovol SV04, an IDEX 3D printer, which means that both extruders can move separately. Sometimes you might be printing with just the left extruder and not using the right. Other times you might only use the right extruder and not the left. And sometimes you'll be printing with multiple materials where the left and right extruders are used back and forth. So what we need here is an efficient way for the slicer to handle these scenarios. Sovol's solution is to have multiple printer profiles in their skinned version of Cura to account for these different scenarios, which by itself is horribly inefficient, but the pre-made profiles were a mess, leaving lots of stringing on pretty much every model. Whereas my early experiments using Super Slicer for this machine yielded much better results. What I needed from Super Slicer was actually quite simple. Only heat hot end one if the project needs it, the same goes for hot end two 
and tell the firmware which extruder to use before the purge line. All of this from a single printer profile. To support the times where I wasn't using one of the hot ends, I had to set up a dummy filament profile called empty and this had temperatures that were way lower than any other filament. Let's say I want to print this object using only the left extruder, I would set my material and set the right extruder to empty. And of course, if I wanted to print it from the right extruder, I can set it to extruder 2 and set extruder 1 to empty. So coming back to my requirements, I could now direct the slicer to only heat hot end 1 or 2 if those extruders didn't have the empty filament selected, which means their temperature was above 50 degrees. Here is my custom start G code using if statements to output what I need. So let's work through it. The syntax for Super Slicer that we need to structure these if commands is exactly the same as Prusa Slicer, and I've linked to this page below that goes through the examples. Cura, unfortunately, from as far as my research tells me, doesn't seem to support conditional G code. So what follows is only for Prusa and Super Slicer. Here is one of my commands for custom conditional start G code. The first thing to notice is the if and end if curly bracket sections at the start and end. This is how the slicer knows only to insert the G code in the middle if a certain condition is met. And that condition goes inside the first if curly brackets. In this example, if the first layer temperature for extruder zero is above 50 degrees. Let's test it out using the left extruder only and setting the right one to empty. We can see in the start G code that the bed temperature is set and then there's only commands for the left extruder T0 after that. Let's now switch it around, printing ABS with extruder 2 and not using extruder 1, and we can see the start G code is updated to heat up T1 or the right extruder only. Finally, our example where we're using both extruders, each with their own set material, and the conditional G code is updated, setting temperatures for T0 and T1 at every stage. It's also worth noting that we use square brackets to pick the left extruder, and for the commands concerning the right extruder, we change those zeros to ones. This is just like our earlier example with the bounding box that has multiple sub values. Except this time we're selecting which extruder we want, once again starting from zero. The last thing we wanted was to tell the firmware which extruder to use for the purge line. That's either going to be T0 or T1, and we set this automatically using the initial tool variable that will output the T command as needed, completing our goal. There's actually a lot more we can do using functions within our conditional G code. For instance, if we use the max function, we can compare and use the higher temperature for the two filaments. The syntax is as follows. Everything goes inside curly brackets, and then we have max followed by parentheses with A and B separated by a comma. The max function will compare these A and B values. For instance here, three and five, and output the larger of the two, in this case, five. Back to 3D printing, I use max to compare the first layer bed temperature for materials A and B, in this case, 110 and 60 degrees, which will output 110. That way, if one material is ABS, it won't peel off from PLA bed temperatures. Using the max function, the start G code for the bed is set automatically. And that's how I set up Super Slicer to handle every scenario for an IDEX 3D printer, which I recently used to explore 4D printing at home. Hopefully the contents of this video are useful, whatever your scenario is. Let me know in the comments section if it's something you're going to try. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, happy efficient 3D printer slicing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.